Well, I'm going ahead and going to do the uh, valve adjustment here, and this is definitely not the correct gap. This is probably 15 or 16 thou on this exhaust, so um, these all feel pretty loose. Yeah, that's like 17. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and reset all these and get back to diagnosing why this car doesn't run. I just wanted to mention one thing. Uh, when you're doing valve adjustments, use hollow ground screwdrivers. Don't use tapered ones because the tapered ones will wobble and they're just not, not good for these machined screws. Whereas the tapered ones, they, they drop right in and they're just, they're a treat. They don't, they don't wobble or shake. So make sure you're using the right screwdriver when you're doing this. It'll make your life a lot easier. All right, so I've gone through and did all the valve adjustment and they were all loose, but maybe two or three thou loose. So that was good to do. But I noticed that this whole engine just is rocking badly. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some uh, engine steady bushings over here to these and see if I can stabilize this because this is a lot of, a lot of motion. All right, well, a short while later, I've now replaced the stabilizer bushing, as you can see, solid as a rock. I noticed also that this oil breather cap, the original one that was on here was all torn out and just damaged, so I went and replaced it with a brand new one. This acts as a small air filter for the crankcase breather system. Also, the hose that goes to this breather was this ginormous rubber, you know, heater core hose, and it was plumbed to the air filter housing itself. I went ahead and replaced it with the correct style hose and I'm going to go ahead and plumb it back into the uh, correct part on the carburetor for uh, the crankcase breather system to function as it was intended. I also went ahead and did an oil change because the old oil that was in here smelled like fuel and I'm going to go ahead and do a fuel pump conversion to electric to get rid of the mechanical pump because it definitely failed and this engine had about five and a half quarts of oil fuel mixture inside it. Well, I went to do the fuel pump conversion and he already has an electric pump back here. So someone left the original mechanical pump on the engine and was running an electric one through the mechanical one and the mechanical one failed. So if you ever convert your car to electric pump, make sure you take the mechanical one off. As you can see, here's a mechanical pump still attached to the engine with the fuel piping running through it. While I was fixing the fuel pump problem, I noticed that the choke on this car was not set up properly. So you can see the arrow and the stopper on the cam. Um, when I rotate the choke, you can see how far out of adjustment this is. So this car would have also been a very difficult car to start because this was not set up properly. Uh, anyway, when you rotate the, this mechanism, the arrow should be parallel with the bolt. Now, when I do tuning, I actually set this stopper here using my tachometer so that it gives 1500 RPMs uh, when activated. But you can see how, how far off this is in its, in its set position. So I'll be correcting that when I get to the carburetor. But I just wanted to show another point on this car that is not set up properly. So I'm at the point where I can attempt to fire it up. Like I said, I've done all the ignition work. Did that fuel pump swap, corrected the choke mechanism here. I've done nothing for settings. I've simply just gone through and checked the basic settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire this up. Let me uh, reconnect power to the coil and see if it starts. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. All right. Unfortunately, as you can see here, we've got quite a bit of smoke going on just at idle. So there's still something bothering this motor. Even though I have it uh, at least starting and running now, and I've adjusted the mixture to give good idle characteristics, uh, it doesn't want to rev and it's, it's got quite a bit of smoke in our rev. And so I'm gonna have to diagnose this further and see what else is going on. All right, so I'm gonna rev it and you'll see
So I pulled the plugs after only running it for a few minutes and you can see just all of the oil contamination that these plugs are getting. So this engine is not in a happy state. Particularly number three, which is this one here. Three seems to be the worst. So after seeing all that smoke coming out, I'm gonna go ahead and do some more digging on this motor. Uh, it does have compression, but again, the rings could be simply filling the hole, not actually sealing the cylinders. Um, one thing that I could do is I could actually replace the valve stem seals because I don't know how long they've been on this motor, even though supposedly it was rebuilt fairly recently, but they could be the original rubber and maybe the ethanol fuel has gotten to it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start by doing valve stem seals on all the cylinders, or all the seals anyway, and um, see if that makes a difference. I've also finished recurving the uh, the new 65D distributor. So if you haven't seen this video, go watch this one. But um, I'm going to go ahead and replace the distributor with this one because the curve on this old unit went from 8 to 23 degrees, and I really want them to get up to 30. So I'm going to go ahead and install this after I finish doing the valve stem seals. And once I've done that, I can go ahead and move on to uh, you know sorting out the carburetor. Um, but that's the plan for now. So I'm going to go ahead and do some valve stem seals and uh, see what happens.